So it's kind of funny how I became a part of this project. Uh, I was surfing the internet and social media and uh, I noticed a picture and then I noticed people started contacting us saying, hey, can't wait to see you and Grand Thumb or Mike Jones uh, in Hawaii fighting dinosaurs in a Jurassic Park film of some sort. I'm like, what the hell is, what is this? So I look through the post and I find this post Gregory Wong and I'm like, there he is. So I contact Greg and I'm like, hey, what's uh, what's up, man? I, I, what's this all about me going to Hawaii and, and being a part of this project? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you about that and see if you wanted to be involved. And I was kind of like, well, I don't really have a choice anymore, it looks like. So I, obviously we did, but once I got into the conversation with Greg and I kind of dove into what, what the script was at that point in time and the story, uh, and I realized that we had hardly any budget, the script was still halfway done, uh, we had no resources available, uh, and we only had a two-week timeline. I'm like, yes, risk and uncertainty. I love that, so I jumped on the project. And plus, it's not a gun flick. It's not an industry film. It's a fun fan film. I didn't know much about the Jurassic Park world, and so I decided to take the deep dive, and that's how I ended up in the project. So in this film, uh, I play Hex. That's my character. Uh, Hex is the mission commander, uh, the guy that's putting all the pieces together, and then, of course, trying to, to make sure that we accomplish this mission is, of course, Hex's entire goal. And then that was a lot of fun playing that character against a lot of the other characters like Kurt. Kurt was kind of the, you can tell if you've seen the film, that it's a, he's the adversary, but, it, but we're old school special operations buddies. We've known each other for a very long time but there's an agenda all of a sudden. It's not like we were when we were in the military. There's this contractor type agenda. Uh, there's something else going on there, but Hex's character can't figure it out yet. And so that's what I thought was kind of fun is building that story throughout the, the movie um, to, to play off of those things and to understand, you know, like the little looks back and forth, the, uh, the little, the menacing acts, like the raptor being put down on the desk. Like that was a, one of my favorite parts in the office scene uh, to show that story before it even happens. So, hey, there's something else going on here uh, that we can tell the audience about at that point in time. And then it starts to build and build and build. And then we end up playing against each other until the end where uh, you see the, the grand finale. And, uh, and that was pretty cool to, to be able to play off of all those different characters. Um, and and that, was, that was easy for me at the same, because that's kind of what I do on a daily basis is I, I do have to run a serious business. I do have to be you know, a serious gunfighter operationally. And uh, so it was kind of easy for me to put that in there, but then trying to tweak it with a story now was, uh, was just incredibly fun and being able to work with all the different characters like Mike and Shannon and, and, uh, and, uh, and Barrett James and, uh, and communicating with all those different people and trying to stay serious the whole time was, was both fun and exciting and challenging for me altogether. So there were so many great parts and uh, aspects of the film and the production. Um, I, I could go on forever about some of the favorite parts I had, but I think overall one of my favorite things about it was we had hardly any resources. So anytime I'm up against any challenge or any project that has limited resources, I love that because I love to add resourcefulness to it. Uh, and I, that kind of went with a lot of the challenges of the film that we were up against and had to find on the spot, almost impulsive solutions. And so I love risk and uncertainty. I love jumping into that type of project and figuring out and improvising, which I know doesn't really work a lot with film. You know, I'm, I'm used to script. I'm used to, hey, here's the production. Here's the program that we're going to pre present. Here's the education aspect. Here's the entertainment aspect. Here's the empowering aspect, the inspiring aspect. Uh, we, we couldn't really focus on that at first because when you got all these different people like uh, the Hollywood people, the crew, the military guys, special operations guys, actors, actresses, and then we had all the extras, the airsofters. You had so many different types of people that we were throwing together in this pot within less than two weeks and saying, hey, we're going to make this project. That was chaos. Um, and I love the chaos. I think that's one of my most memorable points about, or favorite parts of it, uh, was diving into that chaos. And then of course going out of the first scene when we did the waterfall jump, uh, we went on this excruciating hike, uh, carrying all this gear. Uh, I wish we could have brought the entire crew with us to show how all those people came together and did so much more than what was required of them to just get that one scene of Doc and Mike jumping off that waterfall. Um, and so that was pretty memorable, even though it wasn't the most exciting part, I think, of the whole film. But to see in question all the way up until the point where Mike and Doc almost jumped off that waterfall, I was like, okay, 
it's either going to be horrible or it's going to be great. And when I saw those guys working together, I saw Doc and his expression come out, um, Jamie and Costa. And, uh, and Mike worked together and I saw them jump in and then just after that blood, sweat and tears of that hike and getting in there and getting that shot and getting out, I, at that point being the first scene, I realized this is going to be really cool. So that was probably one of my favorite parts of it. Some of the smaller ones for me was like, you know, Rono or Byron, um, uh, his character. We introduced Power Paramotors into the, the story because uh, which doesn't talk a lot about it in the fan film, but instead of using helicopters, you know, we said, hey, well, let's use this light, fast, small, portable system that we can deploy and go in and be very quiet so we don't wake up nature in, in, uh, in the Jurassic world and uh, be able to get the eyes on target that we need. So, and Byron and I travel all over the world and fly some of the coolest places. And, uh, and I remember we were in Iceland last year, we kind of looked at each other and said, man, how do we top this? So I can't say that Hawaii, flying in Hawaii, was topping that Iceland trip or any of some of the other trips that we've done, but to be able to take our passion and put it into a film project was absolutely incredible and of course very memorable. But uh, the biggest and the most, I think, significant memory that I'll ever have was getting the chance to work with Bruce in the T-Rex paddock. Uh, when he gets his legs ripped off and you see us going in and getting into the fight and throwing 40 millimeters, and then going to Bruce and putting the tourniquets on him. Uh, we were excited, you know, Bruce like, yeah, let's do this. And obviously he's, you know, uh, you know dual prosthetic guy and, and dual amputee. Uh, so we said, dude, you're getting your legs ripped off in the movie. And of course, Bruce's his personality, his character is just like, absolutely, let's do this. So to be a part of that on set was fun until I started putting the tourniquets on. And for me, it actually, it was a very surreal moment. And, and what you don't see is what I run into the woods after I'm done with that scene is uh, it took me a while. It took me a while to come back out of the woods because I realized that holy shit, that was real to me because I've been there before. Uh, and I actually felt like I was in Afghanistan with Bruce. Uh, so for me, it was a personal bonding thing. I'm not sure if I'm not speaking for Bruce here, but um, to me, I'll never forget that moment of being with uh, one of my, my right hand man in training uh, and be able to experience that with him and feel that uh, even though I've done it with other people that was just something man I'll, phew, that, was, that was emotional I won't forget it that was cool I think one of the funniest parts that I can remember out of, out of filming this, uh, there's so many. You know, we got Jamie running around doing his impersonations. You got Mike being funny. Uh, we're all trying to get, I'm, you know, and I'm, of course, trying to be the serious character. And I, uh, working with like Shannon and, and Barrett, you know, and, and the, I'm not an actor, right? So uh, they're really trying to help me and, and, uh, and educating me on how to, to use and, uh, my emotions and try to really get into character and feel it. So I'm like, I remember I was really into this one scene. I think we were in the, in the amphitheater. It was dark. We just lost a bunch of guys, so we're trying to be as serious as possible. And uh, looking at, at Barrett, and he's looking at me, and this is where the, the, the menacing part, the, the adversary starts to really come out between us. And I remember him looking at me and just... And I'm thinking like, stay in this emotion, stay in this emotion, stay in this emotion and all. I just freaking lost it because the way Kurt was looking at me. And um, I know it's not a big deal, but for me, I felt like I was really doing the right thing. And then for it to just all fall apart was kind of probably the funniest blooper um, that uh, I remember everybody laughing about that. So uh, that, was, that was pretty funny. The people that came on board the, that had no experience doing some of these things um, from like the the airsofter community that we put out a casting call to and said hey if you guys want to be a part of this project like we had 40 people just show up all of a sudden and we're like man how do we how do we implement these people how do we use them how do we teach them how do we show them and it's like some guys were like nope you don't look the part you get out of here you come in you look the part um, and then we use that other person for something else and then like you know every from like uh barrett Fawbish's wife uh, Jalen, she was incredible because she was wearing like four different hats the whole time and learned how to use a slate like instantly. Like I swear she'd been on the set like all her life. Um, you know, again, the, the director uh, and, and uh, the DP, Nero, coming together and never working together and all of a sudden making magic. I've never seen that before. And that's pretty cool because most of the time when you work on a production with a set, most people, uh, especially your higher leadership, the executive staff, have done something together and nobody did. Uh, at that point in time that I, that I think of. And so to be able to make that magic uh, and create this story for the audience um, was I think really the most exciting part. Even though at the end of the day, this is a fan film, it's a fun film, but I, I can see the future. I can see what, if that team comes together again, um, I'd say stand by to stand by. 
I think the biggest appreciation that I had doing this was people, right? I mean, we're, we tend to live in a world of, of business, of weapons, of tactics, of film, of production, and the daily grind. Uh, and that's always, you know, you appreciate when you're done with a big project like that, but it really does come back to the people because that's what matters. And so I think the biggest appreciation I have is for all those people that came together, networked like overnight and made this and made Greg's vision come uh, into a reality. Everybody from, you know, Chris at the airfield and the management of getting those assets were uh, are critically important to this, this piece. Um, the the film crew themselves everybody involved in that because it didn't take me too long to name names uh and all the hard work and the hours i mean we're working 15 17 hour days for five six days straight uh the dogs of war guys uh, out there all their assets and resources that they were able to bring to the table with again just not just equipment not just location but people uh was what really made this because if we wouldn't have had them uh, we wouldn't have had this this production. So uh, my heart goes out to everybody that was involved in the project. And uh, again, for all you guys out there that did so much more than what was required of you to make this fun fan film a reality, uh, that's something that I don't think any of us will ever forget. And again, thank you. How about a rescue op? Two-man team about a week ago. And Mr. Last Chicken. Your boys are uh, rock stars. Man. Your team's good but they've never seen a dinosaur up close, let alone a 40-foot predator face-to-face. -face. I still think it's a lot of trouble for somebody that I don't think is gonna fit on the team, man. I get it. She's lived this. You gotta trust me, we need her. Oh! 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 Oh!